Okay, everybody, welcome back to eighth grade biology. If you remember yesterday, we went on a field trip up to the shoreline uh, where we collected our samples. We were collecting crustaceans at seven or 10, seven, five, two, and one yards from the water. Um, and in our one yard by one yard square plots, uh, there's us doing our data collection with our hats. Um, and so we brought our samples back. Now you should all have your data. And today we're going to process our data. So can I have one of the groups uh, please read to me uh, the number of crustaceans that you collected um, at these different distances? Yes, please. Um, at one yard, we got 13 crustaceans. Okay. At two yards, we got 15 crustaceans. Okay. At five yards, there's 15 crustaceans. At seven yards, there was 22 crustaceans. And at 10 yards, there were 26 crustaceans. Great. And uh, in looking at this graph, uh, you should see that I've left something out, or actually two things out. What, what, what have I left off of this graph that I ought to have in a nice scientific graph? Uh, you need your x-axis and y-axis labels. Ah, great. I thought you were going to say x-axis and y-axis, and I do have those, mm. but I need the labels. That's excellent. Um, so uh, can you then tell me what I should write here for this label? What do these numbers correspond to? Uh, that's the number of yards. Yes, from ocean. yes yards from ocean. And how about here? What are these numbers? The number of crustaceans? Yes, number of crustaceans. So what we're gonna spend the bulk of today doing is understanding how these two variables relate to each other and how we can make sense of their interaction, uh, which really gets to the heart of designing scientific experiments. And so the first question that I want you to ask yourself is which of these variables were we, the designers of the experiment, in charge of changing? Which of these only changed because we said we're going to change this number? Any ideas about that? Which variable? Is this variable or this variable? Yeah? I think it's the number of yards. Number of yards, exactly. Because we could have collected at one, two, three, four, and five yards. We could have collected at one, by 10 and 15 yards, 100, 200, and 300 yards. We were completely in control of which yards we collected at, okay? And so in science, we call that the independent variable. And so then our other variable, the other question we want to ask ourselves is does this other variable change with respect to our independent variable. And what do you think? Did our number of crustaceans differ based upon our, uh, our distance from the shoreline? Yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes, it did. We have a trend. It seemed to have more crustaceans that were getting farther from the shoreline. And we then called this our dependent variable. Call this our dependent variable because it depends upon our distance from the shoreline, our other variable. And when we're designing experiments in the future, this is uh, the crux of what we'll be thinking about is which variables do we change and which variables are changing as a result of what we are changing. And so you might think, wow, this is kind of confusing, Tynan. You've got these two different names for variables. How am I going to remember them, okay? And uh, here's how we're gonna remember them. We know that independent variable has an I in it. And so if you want to decide which one's the independent variable and which is the dependent variable, you're going to say to yourself, independent variable is the one I change. Okay? So say that with me. Ready? Independent variable is the one I change because it has an I in it. Okay? So uh, thank you all. You did an excellent job with our data collection. And uh, I look forward to moving forward with this process. All right. Thank you.